need for surfing is different, um, you know, as we move through it. So, but there is, I mean, I can get all spiritual about it, right? And be like, oh, you know, but I, I do think, and even with me, as you know, I'm doing that 75 hard thing. My body is changing. Like I'm in better shape now. I'm, I'm, and so I can get a little thinner, you know, and I can, and I'm, you know, so things change, you know, magic boards. I, I don't think the magic board changes. I think we change. Well, we have uh, the perfect guest who just chimed, who just called in, who can chime in on this exact conversation. Welcome, Donald Brink. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, honored to, to have this conversation with you and everyone listening. Um, I, obviously, I'm just catching the tail end on that last bit there, Scott. But yeah, magic boards, I, I've actually been asked about this often. And I think the most honest way to to assess that is just to tell a story or think of your own story even better you know it's you can pinpoint things on materials and frequencies and vibrations and those kinds of things but what's magic to you is most important and I think that's where people go wrong is not being able to articulate which boards were magic at when and why going on that path is maybe more helpful than this is the magic one because unless you start trying to understand what's magic about it to you you're really just um either saying everything's a mystery or nothing is at all i like to accept that everything is a mystery um it sort of opens it up but you know if you take stock of which boards were magic for you and why and when like scott's point was like the way he's changing and the things he can demand out of a board now have changed too even just cataloging that loosely puts the power back in the fact that you can control what you like because most people don't know what they want is because they really don't know what they like um, and to tailor a list of frustrations has been most helpful for me it's a negative way of looking at it but it really um laying that out really starts to pinpoint this is what i'm after because this is these are the things i don't like and maybe i've progressed um, beyond that or um, towards that <laughs> um, you can kind of put the ball back in your court and there are moments when things resonate with certain people and to deny that would say that some things didn't change your life the way one board did at a certain time I like to think they do because I've felt it and I've heard people's story too so it's out there but you know the consistency in materials is so amazingly dialed in now and yet people maybe can't tell exactly which one they like for themselves so you know it's just interesting right there and and people sometimes will say well i can't feel the difference it's like well you haven't tried to take note of it you know and when you see a pro picking up a board and there's something that just relates to them or they just vibe with something that's interesting too and i'll finish on this point it's you know, those magic boards sometimes come because you stuck on it for at least six sessions and maybe wrote it in good waves and broke it in. Maybe not, maybe you did, but you'll often hear a pro like, oh, I just put this one on ice. Well, the fact that they gave it a chance and learned it, um, even that's interesting, you know, like picking through a batch of 12 boards and being able to find the four magic ones is of incredible mystery, but it's also nuanced, right? Yeah. Well, hey, Donald, thanks so much for joining us uh, on the Spit Podcast. I'm going to cut right to it. I've heard through the uh, grapevine that you're in the stab in the dark. Is this true? Yes or no? Uh, if I am, I haven't been notified of that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I came out firing with a super hot question. Uh, there, and oh, I would I'm trying to figure out who the 12 guys are. I mean, do you have any? Uh, I mean, we know that they're probably there's the eight standard guys like mayhem and lost and js and dhd and mm. you know merrick or but who are the who are the periphery guys you know like the last right. four guys they stab usually grabs somebody kind of interesting and um which is why i threw that question out yeah i thought maybe i could catch you off guard oh yeah no um totally honest i haven't uh, been asked to do that which would be such an honor i think the concepts of building the same board for one individual i think it's italo ferrero this year um uh oh what what a delight and even so that's interesting in that you can take um what somebody likes and him articulating that we're learning there's tides rising all the boats will float higher because we're not so much more educated 
it's just more of a popcorn conversation around boards, designs, preference, constantly go back to preference. I think it's a good uh, North Star with how you surf and what you ride. Um, no, haven't been asked yet. Would love to. Would love to build a performance board for you. How well, have yeah, go ahead. demands on your business changed since uh, you and Matt Biolas won the uh, electric acid surfboard test with the mixtape? Yeah, the mixtape did really well. We won that with Mick Fanning, went to the Maldives with the, the STAB project there. Um, the, the demand's higher, for sure. Um, honored to be part of that. Um, uh, let me answer it this way. Yes, yes, people want the board. You can order it through lostsurfboards.net globally. They're doing an incredible job with production. Um, stay tuned. There's a new model release coming out just next uh, month after next. But just keep following along. And I'm really excited about that. It's along those lines. I'll leave it at that. But um, for me, my business has, there has been an um, increased interest, people reaching out. I am manufacturing the model in my process, start to finish by hand. No logos, no fancies, all the frills I choose to use. But um, what, what's been most um, refreshing, if I could use that word, is um, people haven't only wanted that board. They've sort of taken notice of the, the kinds of designs that I am building. And it's 98% of my work is custom. So they're looking at what they're like and maybe going through a few, which are hard to navigate, images on a website to really push them to what they want. And they ended up end up ordering something that's um, not mixtape, um, perhaps even full like radical step ups, real wave boards. Um, so to me, that's been incredibly um, honoring to, to be able to build boards for people that I think have just maybe earned trust in the concept of maybe asymmetry or just um, the hands-on approach or what I'm doing or that. But yeah, that's, I've been grateful for that. Awesome. Uh, did you have a question, Scott? Well, I was going to go back to what we were speaking about before Donald came on, which was the magic board. And Donnie, I was um, suggesting to David that if we were, in fact, to to really pinpoint what part of the process is missing and why, in fact, it's so difficult to replicate the magic board, uh, I suggested to David that I think it's the stringer. I think the flex in the wood is just something that's not something that we can replicate. Everything else you can pretty much dial in. Although I guess foam does have some, you know, varying uh, qualities as well. Mm. I'm going to be careful not to tread on toes here. But I've, I mean, I, I'm a, I love being around surfboards. I'm around them all day. I love it. And um the one thing I don't hear uh, discussed often enough in this particular conversation is um, the actual lamination of the board. And the reason I bring it up, Scott, is because, I mean, yeah, foam is incredibly consistent throughout um, an itinerary or lineup of, of uh, blank offerings. Stringers are, you know, the fact that you're laminating them into a ply layup now, that means there's you know, the, the lim elimination of one bad piece of wood, you know, it's laminated up, you've got a chance of three, they paired together. It's pretty much a level. Uh, the machine uh, the machine cuts are very accurate. Let's bring up the human element now, to me, is really um, machine operator. Very, very under-discussed. But then we go to the top echelons and, you know, I mean, I went through a batch of, 15 of Griffin's new boards for Sunset and Pipe this year happened to be down at the Lost Factory. And this is good for me to learn and look and listen and see. And, and, and I watch those boards get absolutely perfectly painted by Tom Sutherland and then over like a fine tooth comb with, by Matt, you know, and, and, and those things are really taking. So the, the, the best guy is putting the best foot forward. It, it, it's, it's, it's the A team. But what we're not talking about often enough, and I feel like it is relevant, is the... Um, hand lamination like just because you're laying on some sticky fiberglass on some wet red it's it's not the same and i i i believe that um instead of saying magic boards are made or broken or lost in translation in the glass shop by a laminator i think that's the most uncontrollable variable in the spiritual mystery 
think about it. We're working with wet syrup going hard really quickly, making something strong. And if you look at the strength ratio of the parts of a, of a surfboard, I don't believe that the wood is really what makes a board strong. Sure, it helps in uh, rebound a flex pattern. And these are broad brush strokes, but let's just break them down. The way the board is strong is actually by its fiberglass layup. Thousands and thousands of strands of cloth going in the same direction. Now, you could say, well, that's a moot point if you laminate the two boards the same day right next to each other. There's still something going on the way a, a potter would on the clay wheel with his hands. There's something going on about the way resin reacts with cloth from one board to another. That is the individual part. A sander is on the chopping block too. You've got to sand well. You can kind of see the results of that often. But the way a board is actually laminated is what makes it work, what makes it strong. The flex, I actually hate that word. Could we rather use twist and flex? And you start to see how it's like, wow, the lamination is actually, and that's, I mean, you can cut a board pretty well on a machine, but you still got to hand laminate it. And even if it's vacuum bag, like those things, whoever's controlling the, the hard and sticky substances, whew, that's, a, I feel like that's the, uh, the make or break state. So it's human error. It's like nuclear power plants. They're, they work good uh, until a human screws it up. Well, it's human error is one way to look at it. But if we turn that coin on its, on its face, we could say it's, it could be human excellence too. And you have to then be willing to admit that some boards are magic because it was done well or it just came out right. And some boards got screwed up because they were done badly or cut corners. You have to take both and that, which makes surfboards even more precious. Like, let's just double the price tomorrow because now you might have got the good one, right? Um, not bad, just both, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good point. Totally. Well, Donnie, what do you, what, yeah, go ahead, David, please. No, that's exactly the direction I was going to is uh, Donald has spent months and months, maybe even a full year uh, working on a podcast series, all of it just in production mode that he has just edited and released as one complete series. Um, and so that's what we wanted to discuss. Uh, Donald, what is the concept for the process or, or for the series? Yeah, and uh, thanks again for having me on to share this idea. It's 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 as fussy as it is to explain is what it was, and I presented it to um, to Ashton Pickle. So here was the idea: was um, it was just trying to be observant with the things in surfboards, and and sometimes feeling like you're alone in this craft and this world of building surfboards. And I, I it was from frustration of not having anyone to ask or share ideas with, but then also observation. And I was in a position, well, I have been, and people send me questions or they ask something or they'll hit you up on Instagram and, you know, refer something or I'll help somebody and send a drawing. Just, I, I'd like to help if I can, if time allows and if there's um, proximity to somebody who's able to understand and asking smart questions. So that was happening all the time. And I had this concept of, um, and Scott, this is a thanks to you and all the work you've done and to you, David, with having conversations around surfboards. You know, you, you're not really sure what you're going to learn when, but just being around it, things pop up and you, you, you share information. That's actually how we're all growing is we're sharing information. But over the years, I've noticed, um, you know, that there's, there's this unwritten rule in surfboards and surfboard builders. I'm not really sure why, but it's like there are secrets in the industry or there's things that um, aren't well shared. And I feel like that's breaking down now and I'm excited about that. I've been the benefactor of being able to get some of this information just by asking people, being around people that are willing to share. So I had an idea of, um, the, here's, here's the idea. Could we create a Petri dish, a little experiment, a framework within which um, you can model to anybody in any part of life, in any discipline, but we'll use board building and shaping and surfing as uh, the experiment platform to mentor is the wrong word, but let's use it till we get find a better one to to share a share a, a time or walk a walk a path together. So that's what I did. I, I hit up a young shaper, um, Ashton Pickle. Uh, his little brand is called AH Vessels. He's he's building incredible surfboards, but 
I'd, I'd seen him doing good work for long enough and he was shaping by hand or shaped by hand. So that really um, gained my respect um, for this experiment in particular. And I said to him, you know, like, just hear me out, but let's get together for a year. We'll meet weekly and then every three months, let's uh, record and capture what you want to learn. So the concept was, you know, those those conversations that I'd have with board builders once a year down at the boardroom show were perhaps the most treasured and precious things. Yeah, you got to meet new people and customers, but there were old friends that you would see that maybe drove down from Santa Cruz and I knew I'd see them once a year. And sometimes it was like a detailed question on relative humidity when you're throwing uh, hot coats in epoxy. You know, sometimes there were technical questions and sometimes it was just high fives and attaboys. So we got together every year, every week uh, for the entire year. Sometimes it was, most times it was a surf. Oftentimes it was just an early morning. Ashton come, come in, watch me laminate a board. He was really fascinated and wanted to watch me work in that realm, which was fun too. But then every three months we, we catalog what he wanted to learn. So if you could put it in a nutshell, um, the podcast series is six parts those learnings, what he gleaned, and then we'd set course for the next part. What do you want to learn in the next three months? And it really wasn't so much of a, I really try to get out of the way and just let him shine and let the information that he was learning be something that people could learn from and be shared. But if any takeaway could be um, what people hold on to is, what are you working on in life with somebody else that you could walk a road with, walk a path with, go deep with, so the, the project and the series is called U Lane, U Lane, meaning just stay in your lane. And that I'll cast off with this. That was the most, um, well, there were many rewarding parts, but the best part was I never set out to make a small version of myself or a parallel version of myself. I just wanted to encourage somebody in what they were doing and they could then cover the depth because of maybe just a confidence of something, having someone alongside them or a reference to question. And man, uh, the boy, Sean, I mean, he's work elevated. He's, he's an incredible surfer. And um, it, yeah, listening to him learn, together we could all share that information and get a little bit of fuel in our own fires. I certainly did. And yeah, I'm proud to uh, share the work. Six part series, it's presented by Vistler. It's on the Surf Splendor Network. And yeah, thank you for you guys and the work you're doing. But that's really, if you're just selling surfboards, it can feel a little bit like we're not building a community. If you're having conversations and giving away things like this for free, it really helps make sure that we're all um, keeping each other, not accountable, but um, pressed to do our best work. And, and it shows the depth that surfing can and does bring, and we can leverage that. Cool. Well, that sounds really fascinating, really interesting. Uh, tell me, is it is it a a video podcast or is it just audio only? It's a great question, Scott. It, it's audio only, and I I love this format of of audio um, and podcasts in particular. I know this is a video one now, but um, clawing for words and and being really. Um, see even I'm battling I'm clawing for how to explain this right now actually brings out a nuance in when people are listening to it to envision it and picture it for themselves so when we what what I started to do was instead of just sitting in my shaping bed like, like I am now and, and, and sitting down recording we would go to the beach surf and straight away jump in the back of the van and capture the essence of how that board really felt and this was the things that he wanted to learn so that that was fun, and I I do think we caught that in the audio. Um, you you can hear and and hats off to Ashton for being vulnerable and willing enough to put himself out there. Um, he trusted me, and oh, he he just unfolds and develops throughout the year, both in confidence and articulation of what he was doing. But you could just it's it's undeniable um, his path. Tell us a little bit about Ashton. How old is he? You mentioned he's a great surfer. How long has he been shaping? Where is he from? Give us some background on Ashton Pickle, please. Absolutely. I, 
I will leave the first episode to really unpack that in absolute depth. So if I miss a stat or a number here, forgive me, listen to that there. But um, yeah, Ashton's a young guy. He's been shaping, he's been shaping for just coming on 10 years now, hand shaping, and um, been full-time at it for, I, I want to guess about five years maybe. But he's an interesting individual because he's an incredible athlete. He's an excellent surfer. And he only makes twin fins. So you've got this, <laughs> so you got this package of like, okay, this sounds interesting. But his studied background is in physical therapy. So Scott, the way he observes the way people move from walking, surfing, healing, injury, he's looking at everything through this, this lens of body anatomy. And the cool thing is, is like he's exploring asymmetrical boards and has been for a long time. And so we'd vibe on the way body mechanics is working, trying to cater to your strength of the heel versus toe. Um, that, that's probably enough to draw you into who he is and why his perspective is so interesting. But his understanding of the, the body mechanics is wow. Um, you might know his work or see his boards best written by uh, Jimmy Thompson, who's um, doing an incredible job riding all and only twin fins. He's on the North Shore right now, did the Triple Crown. And, you know, this guy's putting his life on the line and serious waves of consequence. And then down at Sano and Lowers on twin fin, twin fins only. And it's really cool to see somebody so focused to a varying um, array of boards, but the conceptual element of twin fins only, it's pretty cool. And he's building some good boards. Wow, that's fascinating. Twin fins only, twin fins in Hawaii at Backdoor Pipeline. That sounds fascinating. Yeah, it's, and it's, I mean, you can only just, you look at the footage and it's, it's really cool. And the best part is they're very open and honest about the flaws that were in the boards the year before and what they're changing and how, and you can just see it from one year to the next, the footage. And uh, yeah, hats off to Jimmy. What an incredible surfer. In fact, we interview him on episode five. I just, I needed to know more. And he's a young guy out of um, South Carolina. Uh, just, he wanted to, he wanted to get better at surfing, moved out to California and he's been here for five years, just shy of five years now. And his surfing has, uh, in my opinion, turned heads. He's on a, he's got this raw approach to the way he rides waves that you, it's fascinating and it's cute, but it's undeniable because he's doing the right thing in the right part of the wave every time. And I can't wait to see where he takes his brand of surfing. I feel like people want to start surfing like him. Is, does that make sense? When yeah. you see yeah. like a, see people almost like paving a path that like others will follow because it's so, both, both beautiful to watch, it's unique, but it's beautiful to watch, but it's also, um, I guess right thing at the right part of the wave is what he's doing. It's pretty cool. So, well, the series is a genius concept. I think I, we've heard a lot about uh, shapers who have had, who have mentored other shapers, you know, like so many people have come on under brewer or, or whatever it is, but none of their conversations were ever recorded. And so hmm. to be a fly on the wall in that same kind of dynamic is really interesting. And to be perfectly honest, Scott and I interview shapers all the time, but we're not shapers. And so we're asking questions from the position of being a surfer who appreciates boards, but to have two shapers discussing ideas who are also surfing and then discussing immediately is a, a genius concept. So I appreciate you doing it. Well, thank you. What, what's funny though is what, what boiled to the surface and, and hopefully to be transparent with the framework was it wasn't surfing only. Obviously we used surfing as our lens. Um, we, we did try and everything is unedited, by the way. So all the conversations are raw. They're family friendly, of course, but it, it, there's no button it up neat and tidy. We, we struggle through things. And that's why I think you can trust the information. We don't tell you what to do. We just unpack what we're learning and ask more questions. But what boiled to the surface and was distilled out of it was, I think that this concept is actually better borrowed from surfer to surfer, like why, why in our lifestyle of surfing, we don't um, have someone come under our wing and walk a road with them, but you have to be intentional. I think that was the summation of what we learned was move with intent, go with the flow. 
you have to say, okay, let's surf together for a year. And we surf together every week and you learn and you share a coffee and then you have a beer one night. Like it's, that's being intentional in any discipline seems like that's where the fruit is. And so, yeah, you've, you've interviewed shapers and maybe you don't know what to ask, but we learning about how to approach life from the questions you ask. So it's not wrong. It's just, it was interesting that what came out of this was, I feel like this is actually better fit for surfer to surfer as a principle to try on and walk with, you know? Yeah. Very good. Well, um, I have started following Ashton ever since you announced this idea to me. And uh, he's fascinating. Great. Like you said, great surfer, but the boards that he's building are really interesting too. So I encourage everybody to go uh, check that out. AH Vessels. And then the series is um, entitled You Lane, but it's available on your previously existing podcast feed, which is Swell With My Soul. So uh, for listeners, Donald Brink has a show that he's been doing for years called Swell With My Soul. It was on hiatus for a little while while he was doing You Lane, but now You Lane is available all six episodes at once. So you have to search Swell With My Soul, and then you'll find the most recent six episodes are You Lane episodes one through six. Yeah, and thank you for this. Um, we'll start with normal uh, programming soon. I didn't want to bury the, the, the project, but yo, the, the year was spent, lots of good work being done and happy to share it. That's, that's the goal. Awesome. Well, congrats on a year of success between that and uh, the mixtape win. It's been a huge year. Yeah, it's, it's uh, thank you. It's, it's funny to think it, it, it feels like so long ago that Ashton and I, I know the date because of the days we got together and uh, it was January 26th sitting here was the first uh, audio conversation. So that was just the three short days ago on calendar now, but this year felt long because we did so much. And yet the things I learned are so um, crystal clear. The things I'll carry with me as North Stars forever. And he taught me those. Those were gifts I, I am so grateful to have learned. Um, I mean, to be honest, it was a bit of a shellfish ex exploration because you know yeah. you'll learn when I wasn't there to teach. I was just there to encourage and motivate. But that intentionality um, proved so many things true and even detailed things within how to surf. You know, my surfing's changed from having someone like him on a regular basis. And I had no idea what I was writing. I got out of my own way, wrote whatever he asked me to. And that, that in that in of itself was exciting. You know, he has a board, he has a board and just writing all kinds of things, twin fins too. So, yeah. Awesome. Let me ask, let me ask you this, Don. I mean, if, um, obviously you, you gained a lot from this experience with Ashton. If in fact, hypothetically, this was something that you wanted to do again, and you could pick one person and or shaper um, that would go on this journey. You guys would go on this journey together or you and a gal, whatever. Uh, who who might that person be? I, I know I'm sort of throwing you under the bus here or putting you on the spot. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, the reason I bring it up is because I keep thinking of Matt Kinoshita, who does this great job on YouTube of just, you know, he's very giving, you know. And it right. seems like that's when you mentioned intentionality, that that's the kind of guy you need, that kind of tone needs to be set early. So is there somebody where you're like, huh, maybe this guy, but you really don't know because with Ashton, you got to sit down and have coffee and kind of, you got to get to know him. So I don't yeah. know, throwing that out there. What do you think? It's a good question. Um, I haven't thought about it too much and I'll tell you why is because uh, Ashton and I's experiment has actually now continued. So this next year is looking like we're actually going to be even more specific on very um, certain elements. So it's become more of a technical exploration rather than a, a buddy system. Um, but to answer your question properly, uh, I would probably meet with um, a surfer rather than a shaper this, if I had to spend another year. To mix it up only to... Um, yin and yang information because if you get so board specific and forget surf centricness it's all about technique so i would probably go in that vein um yeah hard to answer right now but 
to your point of Matt Kenoshida and the beautiful work and information he shares. Um, yes, agreed, amazing. But I always feel like people sometimes think, oh, I'm not a Matt Kenoshida. I don't know enough. I don't, I don't have something to share or they don't have a confidence enough to put themselves out there. And I totally understand maybe those feelings. I don't know, know that's true, but I'm imagining an old salty shaper down in Western Australia. Ah, oh, let me give the little mate down the road a chance. Like if something like that could catch fire and um, imagine people and, it's, and having one person under your wing versus starting a YouTube channel, is way more manageable and authentic in terms of you can just be yourself and you only have to be vulnerable in front of one person, let alone a camera. That really is the goal. So, I mean, to be totally transparent, I, I approached Bristler with this idea <laughs> the November before last. And I was like, hey, what if we had this sort of mentorship program where you get younger and older or just brothership and, and, and sharing ideas? And they were like, well, it's good. I'm not sure anyone will do it. And I was like, well, I'm gonna do it. And, so I did the work and, and, and I'm, I'm grateful to them for presenting this series. Um, they helped me put that forward, which is really, I'm grateful for that. But the concept of, I think it's a good concept, but don't have to make it so overwhelming and big. You, you know someone in your life that you can help out a little bit. And it's not always old to young, it's just across the path. Um, I'm not sure why it is in surfing that you don't get somebody calling you out on bad technique. You might have, Scott, because you surf with the same people often enough. But when's the last time somebody pulled you apart and like, dude, your front arm's all cocky on the on the on the front side floater? You fix it like this. It it just doesn't happen, right? No. And, no, it doesn't. and I <laughs> and I, I I understand that maybe in surfing because it's such a um, uh, exploration of one's own self. But when it comes to surfing, then surfboards and shaping, it it, should, it doesn't have to be the same way. We can share. So. That's maybe where this came from. I have a feeling uh, you're going to get a lot of people asking you to uh, mentor them after this conversation, but also this series after they listen to it, because you are so uh, open and uh, willing to share. So you might have uh, to turn down a ton of people. Well, to be honest, let's we can forward them to the series and it's like, well, here's a worth a year's worth of learning start there so it is yeah. like i said it's something to give for free um you'll probably learn very similar things and then your own path will be unique to and of yourself but i i would i would throw the ball back and say you know what why don't you go spend the year with somebody else like th this isn't about finding me it's about finding who you are that's the you lane yeah. it's terrible branding i understand and the name's <laughs> even weak but it needed to be as fussy as the concept was, which is fussy, I admit. Um, yeah, find somebody in your own life. You're fine. You don't need me. <laughs> yeah. Good good advice. Yeah. Well, Donald, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. I know I spoke a lot. There's, there was a lot to cover, but I appreciate the opportunity to share these ideas and the concept and the podcast and the series. Thanks to all your work you do, Scott, both uh, on the podcast side, the boardroom show and more. Um, yeah, really, really appreciate it. It's a good community we have in the surfboard world and it's it's an honor to be a part and to to share, so. Thank you, Donald. Yeah, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. All right, I look forward to listening to the rest of the show. We'll be live soon in a day or two, I'm sure. Yep, right on. All thanks, right. Donald. See ya. Bye. Bye. Scott, seems to be about your bathroom break time <laughs> right about now. You know what? AG1, it goes right through you. All right, go for it.